Hi, my name is Brian Denyer. I'm the editor of uh, AV News and the presenter of a series of podcasts recorded here at ISE 2019. It's the biggest show in the world. We have 85,000 visitors. Everybody that's involved in the industry is here. So it's a great opportunity to talk to people that are really hard to catch up with the rest of the year. So today I have two representatives of Mersive, Rob Bowgley and Martin Payne who have come to explain their latest uh, announcements to the hero of the show. If you are in the vicinity, you can go along and see them in booth number 14 in 130. Excellent. Let us start off. Uh, I'm very much aware of what Mercif is, 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 has been doing in recent years. Uh, the last time I had an opportunity to catch up was, I think, at the distributor show in the UK in the summer, I'm pretty certain, uh, of last year. And there, the big talker was uh, the addition of uh, Miracast capability to the Mercedes package as it stood. So perhaps you can explain what has that now brought to the product that it wasn't there before? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so as a, uh, as a wireless content sharing product, I think that uh, the, uh, the Solstice product stands alone uh, in, in the industry for its ability to uh, quickly uh, follow uh, market trends, right? Because we're a software company, so we, we, we are, we're unique in that regard. So adding things like Miracast, uh, being able to keep up with uh, things like AirPlay um, are very much a part of our heritage because as a software company, we can make changes very quickly and we can closely follow the contours of the market requirements. So Miracast uh, gives us uh, kind of a uh, parallel construction approach to being able to share clientless Right? So you don't have to have the Solstice app with AirPlay. You don't have to have the Solstice app with Miracast. So uh, it allows people uh, to come in and share their content uh, in an even more convenient way. They don't have the full power of the Solstice app, uh, but it still allows them to share content uh, the, to the display and to participate, which is the whole point. And so do you have any particular hardware or operating system allegiances? Uh, or is that a relatively free choice? Uh, it's a free choice. Uh, you know, one of the unique things about the product, something we've worked very hard at, and again, I think it, it, it's evocative of uh, being a software company, is our ability to make uh, a, a Windows laptop uh, user experience look very similar to an Android experience or look like an iOS experience. You know, what you really want to achieve uh, in a meeting room environment is the ability to come in with any kind of device and not have to be retrained if you're coming in with your iOS phone where previously maybe you walked into the room with a Windows laptop. So all the clients look the same and we have complete cross-platform support. This is very welcome news, I'm sure, to those who have legacy installations and not even that old, but just different, a blend of hardware and, uh, and OSs uh, across. So, so the main thing about this ISC, uh, moving on from summer of last year, last time I saw it, right. what am I looking at this year? Right. Well, we, we are making some big announcements this year. Um, again, uh, as a software company, one of the things that we're able to do is to leverage uh, commodity hardware platforms like our Android platform. And so uh, we've, we've evolved that platform now, and we've done it in a way that's quite unique. Um, we've added uh, quite a bit of I.O. capability. Uh, probably the most prominent feature in the new Generation 3 hardware platform is our wired input, uh, which may seem kind of counterintuitive because the whole idea of wireless content sharing is to be wireless. But what we've heard from our customers is, yes, we want to move everybody to wireless content sharing, and we do want to get rid of the cables. But, you know, unfortunately, practical realities being what they are, you know, sometimes people just want to be able to plug in. And so we're now offering, as, as part of the Solstice experience, you can now use wired input through HDMI on the front of the box uh, to share content. And when you do that, it looks exactly like any other Solstice uh, uh, post share that you might be doing. Um, you know, there's another advantage. Uh, today, um, we, we don't support Linux, for example. Um, as, as a native, we were talking about cross-platform. One of the things we don't support is, is Linux. But actually now with wired input, you could get support for Linux. You can get support for things uh, uh, for Chrome as well now on, on the operating system. So not only does it uh, continue to drive the inclusivity that Solstice is known for with AirPlay and with Miracast, but now you can join Wired as well. And if you happen to have a client device that's not supported, you can join and, and participate just like everybody else. 
So um, that's a big deal, I think, um, in terms of solving some of the problems that our AV integrators face in making choices in the room. The other big announcement, um, which is somewhat similar, is dual HDMI out or, or dual display out. Um, so what we're doing is giving uh, our, our AV integrators and our customers the ability to have multiple displays from the same Solstice pod. So you can mirror content or you can span content. So it really gives you a, a much more uh, expansive uh, palette upon which to share content. You can use one display to park content. The dock still sits on the far left. You can move content between the two displays. It's edge aware, so you can span uh, and, and, and curate the way you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, part of it is um, we're very focused on, you know, we love traditional meeting spaces. We love conference rooms. Everybody loves a, a high-end conference room. But, but the reality is, is that the market is moving more towards informal meeting spaces and huddle spaces. Um, and so uh, the pod is, I think, in, in many ways unique in its ability to support that type of a use case. And so uh, both HDMI in and, uh, and dual display out uh, give you the ability to consolidate most of your collaborative functionality into one box, which is great for a huddle space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's worth uh, uh, restating um, from, from last summer. Last year we announced a couple of other important developments. Um, one is our calendaring feature as part of our splash screen, and the other uh, is digital signage, which we announced in the fall. So digital signage, calendaring, HDMI in, dual HDMI out, really gives you a consolidated platform for any kind of a space, especially a huddle space. So these are uh, all part of our approach to the market, which is more platform-like uh, in the last year or two, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take a very light touch approach to what has been some fairly uh, complicated technology. It can be very expensive. Um, another example of that would be Solstice Inc., which we're launching with this release at this show as well in our 4.0 release. Another example of a light touch is being able to use your phone for annotation, markup, and highlighting. Right, so you're still just bringing your phone into the room. You're not having to open up a new application. You're not having to go up to the display and start touching the screen, but right from your seat in a meeting, you can use your phone and you can mark up and annotate and highlight. So all those things are part of a platform approach to be able to make informal uh, ad hoc meeting spaces uh, have all the functionality of a high-end room at a fraction of the cost and none of the user training because I think that's the gold standard in terms of collaboration. Walk in and begin participating immediately. So that's what we're announcing at this show. And, and one other thing actually, Rob talked about the, the breadth and the depth uh, of the, the content sharing and, and collaboration. All of this is, is now measurable, if you will, through our, our cloud analytics platform called Kepler. So we've been known as, as an enterprise-ready solution because we have a dashboard that allows centralized management of the entire Solstice deployment. Now we capture all this information that's occurring in each meeting room, uh, room utilization and things like pieces of content being shared. We capture that in a product called Kepler and we can tell you how many pieces of content get shared, by whom, by what device, how long does the meeting last, and things of that nature. And that gives it administrators and lines of business insights that they can use to improve uh, meeting productivity, uh, space utilization, and things of that nature. So there, there's a whole uh, monitoring and management element to this as well. Yeah, thanks, Martin. With, with the, um, and I've uh, spoken to Mercer in the past, you have a very good installed base in education, particularly higher education. How is progress amongst the corporates? Yeah, it's, it's you know, in many ways, I think, uh, you know, Martin and, and Chris James and I, we, we, uh, we, we love the company uh, for a number of different reasons, but I think if you could design a business that's almost nearly ideal, immersive would be that business because, um, you know, every business has a little bit of seasonality in it. We actually uh, uh, split 60-40 corporate higher education. Um, but what's great about it is we, we love our corporate customers, they're the bulk of our business, but we also love our edu customers for a couple of different reasons. One is from a seasonality standpoint, when the corporates start to go on vacation, that's when the unis really come on strong, which is late spring, you know, in through the summer. And, and it reverses itself 
uh, at the end of the summer as well. So it really allows us, you know, as a business, uh, I, I think, to continue to hit our goals evenly throughout the year, which is great if you're a business guy. But I think the other thing we're finding is that um, both the universities and our corporate customers, our large enterprise customers, are able to contribute uh, market requirements that the other finds valuable. So an example would be moderator mode. That was originally designed to give a professor or a teaching assistant some semblance of control in a large classroom environment. And what we found is, is a lot of our corporate customers like that feature as well. Um, the original idea behind Souls to Sync actually came from meetings that we were having with, uh, with Harvard. And uh, w what we found is that a number of our university customers agreed really like the feature, but our corporate customers love it just as much. So it's a, really, uh, it's a really nice balance between the two. You know, the corporate enterprise guys are, um, are much more conscious of security, right? So, so, so the sales cycles there tend to be a bit longer. Uh, the university customers certainly have those concerns, but they don't go quite as deep, right? So they both buy a little bit differently. But uh, yeah, 60-40 corporate uh, to university. It's interesting to note, too, we're also seeing uh, some very, very strong growth in primary education. Um, which, which has surprised us a little bit um, because you would typically think in that environment they'd be looking at a product that maybe is a bit less expensive than Solstice even though it's very competitively priced. But uh, we're seeing worldwide, uh, we're seeing adoption um, in, in primary education and in high school as well. So uh, I think everybody is, uh, is getting on the bandwagon in terms of having better meetings. You know, one other thing I'd add, too, I'm, I'm still not even a year at Mersive. One of the interesting things I found when I first just started studying our customers at Mersive is our corporate customers actually represent the, the use of wireless collaboration technology really through the furthest reaches of the organization. I think wireless, uh, I call it wireless presentation technology, kind of limited itself to, to the larger conference rooms. But when corporations adopt Solstice, uh, they see the benefit of this unscripted, simultaneous collaboration among people, and they have a tendency to deploy it across a multitude of huddle spaces, transitional spaces. You'll see some people with, with Solstice in their office where they've got seating for just a couple of people. So it, it gets deployed um, pretty broadly within mm -hmm. corporations. So um, here we are. We've got three full days left. At ISC, the average visitor stays in the show for less than two days. If you had to sum up briefly why people should carve out time to get along to Hall 14, see Mersive, what would you, your best justification be? Yeah, I would say uh, <coughs> come on in and see Solstice 4 uh, which will be out mid-February, so a couple of weeks, and uh, and, and, and take a look at, uh, at, at the new Generation 3 uh, platform that 4.0 sits on because it is truly groundbreaking um, in terms of functionality, performance, and price. Nothing like it. Thank you very much. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you.